Baseball fans know all about the Mets' epic comeback during the 86 World Series. Daryl Strawberry was part of that championship team. And yet, he's quick to say that was not the biggest comeback of his life. So what was? Take a look. Legendary baseball player Daryl Strawberry was extremely successful in his sports career. He won four World Series titles and appeared in eight All-Star games. But off the field, this baseball icon struggled with addiction, abuse, and even jail time until he found true redemption and restoration in Jesus Christ. In his book, Turn Your Season Around, Daryl shares how you can overcome life's adversities too by making small daily decisions. You know you got issues, you know you got stuff, give it to God and let become a man. To follow God into a life of faith, health, and freedom. Well, joining us now via Skype is Daryl Strawberry. Wonderful to have you with us. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Thank you for having me, Terry. It's great to be with you guys. Well, Daryl, we've mentioned your accolades, all-star outfielder, rookie of the year, Mets Hall of Famer. And yet you title a chapter in your new book, Redefine Your Identity. So what is your redefined identity? Redefine your identity is uh, who God created you to be. Uh, I think we get so consumed with the fact of all these earthly things that we achieve. And at the end of the day, it's meaningless. Just like uh, King Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes, you know, he was talking about how everything is meaningless under the sun without God. So what is he saying? That means everything else is going to pass away, even you. But God is always going to still be the same, and he's going to always do what he does and he changes people's he transforms their life into the greatness of what he's called us for to be able to do great kingdom work so you know i had everything i was privileged my whole life live behind community gates my kids were privileged but at the same time i had the wrong identity i had the identity of me being a celebrity baseball player but today you know in my book and my life is the man of christ that's who i am and that's what i always wanted to be your baseball career is usually seen as a case study in what could have been. I know there had to be a time, a p period of time where you had regret about that. How did you move past the regret to be able to move positively forward? Well, I don't think I've ever had regrets about it, what could have been, because it was supposed to be what it's supposed to be. My journey was what it was because of the brokenness of my life. And when you're separated and you're broken, you live a sinful life and you're supposed to go to some type of journey. And I went through it. And what could have been turned out to be what my mother prayed for. My, pray, mm. my mother prayed that God would save me in the midst of her dying. She prayed wow. that God would bring salvation to me. And that was the most important thing. And then my wife, Tracy, comes along in my life, and she leads me back to the Lord. And there it is. God sits me for seven years, and then he transforms me. And then he sends me out to be evangelist because I was never quit, equipped. Uh, and, you know, and the Bible says my people perish because of lack of knowledge and no understanding of God's word. And that's why I was perishing from a worldly standpoint. You became a Christian during a convention back in 1991, but th there were still years there where you were a slave to sin that existed in your life. What was happening during that time for you? Well, I think was what was happening, I had the experience in the conversion of accepting Christ, like most of us do when we come down to the altar. But do you have the revelation, which is discipleship? If you don't get discipled, you go back to the familiar because you have nothing to work with. There's no biblical principles, understanding of the knowledge of God's word that's downloaded inside of you. It has to get down inside of you so you can be equipped to fight the enemy. And if you don't have that, you're going to go back to the familiar of what life is all about. So I went back for another, what, 10, 15 years or whatever, lost, broken, and until, you know, I got pulled out of the pit by God and he put me in a pulpit and eventually my life would become what it is today to win souls today for the kingdom of God. Yeah, Daryl, I think that happens to so many people. They have that point where they make a commitment and they expect their lives to turn right then and there. And when it doesn't, they get discouraged and feel like God doesn't love them, that maybe they're not good enough. What was the turning point for you? 
Well, that's that's a good point because God loves you no matter who you are. You know, God loves you in all the mess. You look at all the people in the Bible that had issues, uh, and and God loved them through it and, and used them mightily. Moses' speech impediment used him to lead, lead the Israelites out of bondage. And you look at uh, my life. The turning point in my life was my wife Tracy coming into my life. She was strong in her faith, and I watched her and I watched her follow God. And I kept looking at her, and I said, God, I want what she has. And God says, Well, you're gonna have to spend time with me. And that's when I went into a, a consecration with God, and I actually started spending time and separated myself from the worldly things and the trophies and and all the things I achieved. And I got into the Bible, and it's in the Word of God. You know, it's it's the Bible that liberates you. God rescued me, redeemed me, and restored me. Yeah. But everything you you come to a place of liberation when you put the Word down inside. You download the Scriptures, and that's what Billy Graham said. Most Christians are not having victory because they don't know scriptures. The powers are in the scriptures and in the Word of God. And I learned to study the Word of God. I learned to be with God. I learned to hear from God. And I learned to do God's will. Yeah, that's so important. There's a very powerful, poignant moment in your book where you talk about forgiving your father, but then coming to a place of understanding you needed to ask him to forgive you as well. Talk about that. Yeah, that was a that was a broken situation for a very long time, and I kept him out of my entire career and my lifestyle of uh, when I was a professional athlete. And then God saves me, and I'm going to do a men's conference in California. And God speaks to me on a Friday night. My father's down in hospital in San Diego, and He speaks to me about going and repenting to my father and asking him to forgive me for keeping him out of my life and career. And I was kind of shocked, but I called my wife, and she prayed over me. She says, "You need to do what God." has called you to do. So I go down there and I see my father and I asked him, I didn't talk about anything that he did to me. I said, will you forgive me? And I come to you and ask for forgiveness for all that I've done to keep you out of my life and my career. And he shook his head and said, yes. And a tear came down his eye. Mm -hmm. I just lost it. I lost it. I laid in his lap. I just cried so hard. And then God said, raise up. And there it was. I, in the midst of my, all the the broken pieces, God was starting to put them back together. I was leading him to the Lord in the center of prayer and led him to the Lord. Then a few months later, he goes on the pass and goes home to be with the Lord. So it was, God reminded me about, about forgiveness. The forgiveness was not for my father. The forgiveness was for me. That's why I stayed broken for so long. Boy, and obedience is such a powerful thing. I mean, when we when we listen to what God's telling us to do and we do it, it's it just is widespread in its impact. Great book, Daryl. Thank you so much for being with us today. It's great to see you. Your new book is called Turn Your Season Around. It's available nationwide. I think you'd all enjoy it very much. Thanks for being with us. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me. God bless you guys. You too.